the UK did more or less 20 years ago in the field of uh, 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 technology transfer and research and invention and, and what happened. So in 1986, the UK government abolished the National Research and Development Corporation, which then allowed universities to come in and own their own IP and therefore be responsible for commercialising it. So various universities, Imperial in College London included, took an initiative to set up a technology transfer office. And I joined in 1999, so 10 years later. And my understanding of what had been happening in that first 10 years was that universities were trying to understand what did it mean if an inventor would have a share of the um, revenue, maybe be a director of a spin-up company or maybe um, be driving a, a project, a research commercialisation project within the university labs. So there was a lot of policy decisions and, um, and a lot of uh, just discussing how this would all work. By 1999, the government had moved with several interventions and incubating spin-out companies is one of those, providing seed funds, <coughs> university challenge seed funds was another, encouraging higher education, reaching out to business and community was a third, and there was also an entrepreneurship and a technology bundling initiative. So those really set the scene in the UK. Different universities have used those funds to do technology transfer, knowledge transfer in different ways, but essentially it really, I think the impetus came from that date. Um, in the meantime, of course, other countries have taken steps uh, learning from the experiences of uh, the US and the UK too. Um, what have you observed uh, on the uh, EU level mainly? Have uh, there been uh, uh, steps to make sure that best practices are adopted among the member countries? Yes, not all of these are EU initiatives. I think the Lisbon agenda that was set um, indicating uh, um, the percentage of GDP that would be spent by industry on research really started governments to think how they would respond to that. And every national government has responded differently. So we still have several national systems rather than an, a, an EU system. The EU funding for research programme, the framework programmes, have served to bring everyone together in terms of research consortia. So I think Europe is really ahead in terms of organising these large projects, bringing together many institutions from different European countries. But in terms of the technology transfer best practice, that's still left to the individual in the countries. Um. If you uh, had the chance of uh, tackling uh, some of the issues that uh, today uh, make it so that the process is not at its optimal, uh, what would be the highest priority item that you would pick? Well, I'm a really big believer in having a market-led approach. So being able to interact with business and the community is, it should be driven by what does business and the community want. So a bigger voice for industry and a bigger voice for society in terms of what they would like from the universities. So it's not technology pushing out of the university, but more industry drawing products from the university base. And that probably means more dialogue, that's happening. It means more funding, we're seeing more of that. And examples where companies are outsourcing their R&D expenditure and... Um, uh, universities are participating in so, sort of more bigger social networks, bigger networks between universities and companies. I think is evidence that this is happening. But more better articulation of what industries want and a better commitment from them in terms of partnering with the universities. All right, thank you very much. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you.